Hey everyone, welcome to She Devils United. This is our match reaction. Real Betis nil, Manchester United won. Manchester United through to uh, another European Cup, European competition quarterfinal, I'll say. Europa League quarterfinal beckons for Manchester United. Who do you want in the draw? Does it matter? We could face Arsenal or Sporting, depending on who wins later on. It wasn't a vintage game. I mean, it was, I mean, Betis were by far and away the better side in the first half. They definitely brought the game to Man United. I think we struggled with the pace um, that they were setting. Uh, we definitely came more into the game as it went on in the first half. The second half, I think, was quite dominant and easy for Man United. It really, really was. Um, someone is saying an echo. Hang on one second. I'll just see if I can fix my audio, guys. No, it, it... My audio should be fine. Let me know. Let me know where if my audio, if you can hear me. Um, Laws Man United won Real Betis nil, uh, five one in aggregate. I mean, we were never going to go there and like hammer them, really. Um, but it was. Look, they definitely created a lot of havoc, I think, in that in that first half. Um, yeah. But United were comfortable. I mean, we really were comfortable. Sum it up for me, Laz. It was a bit of a messy game, really. Um, they were always going to make it hard for us. Um, it, like you say, we're never going to go in there and, and batter them again and, you know, play how we did at home. But... I think we got the job done. I think we were able to then, you know, I mean, the game was already deaded off, but we were able to then get that one goal and then get the players that we needed to come off, come off, you know, ready for Sunday. So I think all in all, it was it was a game that we kind of needed. Not too much, too intense, you know, too labour intensive. We just got the job done, got the players off and, you know, we're on to the quarterfinals. And we, you know, we didn't pick up any injuries, no suspensions. So it was all good. Like we went there, we got a win, we rode the storm, we rode our luck. Like that, a lot of players got a rest. You know, we brought Rashford off quite early, which was good. Me personally, I probably wouldn't have started him. I know he got that unbelievable goal. But I, I mean, I think we could have drawn the game and been fine. We were 4 1 up. Um, it was nice to get a win. Was it vintage? No, but I mean, I've seen Man United go away, neat and draws under Fergie, and like, I mean, stink in the place out of being nil nil, and that you know, we get the job done and we win because last the damage was done in that first leg. We, we, yeah. we were never, they were never going to come back into this game and 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 claw back a three goal deficit, they really weren't. So it was comfortable for Man United. Um, Trev says Maguire played well. The, the comments are going funny for me. Oh, hi, there we go. Um, no. Not for me. I think he got with guys here. I don't know what's going on with StreamYard, but the, the comments are going funny. Um, Maguire was awful in that first, yeah, I so. first half. Um, I don't really think they threatened a lot in the second half, but he was awful in that first half. And he was getting fucking targeted um, in the first half. Very, very shaky. They kept running in behind. It was easy because he doesn't have any pace. Um, second half, it was okay. It was okay for him. But last, Maguire showed tonight why he needs to go in the summer, really. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to go all the way in on him because, I mean, we won and we kept clean cheap. But really, a better side there tonight. They would have been 2 or 3 nil up because of Maguire. Yeah, I, I think... It still made us shaky at the back. I think this season we've we've been lucky again to kind of have a, a centre back pair in that we felt comfortable in. So when we bring Maguire back into it, it's kind of like we're falling into last season again. And and you do get worried when you do see any team against us going forward when you've got Maguire there. He he just doesn't look confident. He's got no confidence in him. But he's actually probably one of the most narcissistic players. <laughs> We've got because he thinks he's God's gift, um. But it's just he's he's not good enough. He's not good enough at all. There was there were certain clearances that he could have got a lot more, you know, power onto or a lot more distance on, and it was just kind of going ten feet and back to a Betis player. So I don't think he had a good game. There was a couple of you know standard things that he did correctly, which any defender should be doing. It yeah, he level, cleared a couple lower. of chances and he had a, a block or two, but yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he had a good game. I think 
he had a mediocre, I'd say very below average game for the level he should be at. So and I, I can't, I, like you say, I'm not going to go in on him because we got a clean sheet, we won, but I, st- I can't, I can't agree with that he had a good game. No, I, I definitely, especially that first half, I thought he was fucking dreadful in that first half. Uh, it was okay in the second half because we, I think we were comfortable. It was protected by Casemiro. I thought if any of the two had a good game, Martinez had a really good game. Um, again, uh, but, it, you know, it just goes to show when you take Varane out, how shaky. Yeah, and like, that's the worry though, isn't it? Because... Varane can be injury prone and he needs to rest. We need we need to have that backup with, that we can be confident with um, when we don't have Varane. You know, we love Martinez and we laud over him, but we've seen Martinez earlier on the season with Maguire in there in that Brentford game, uh, in the Brighton game. And he, I, I don't really think it was Martinez because he was new. Um, I think it was more on Maguire and then Luke Shaw looks bad and, you know, mm-hmm. Aaron Mambasaka, Dalo, they all, he makes everyone else around him look fucking bad. That's how bad he is. Everyone has how, to cover him. How we got in that England team, make it make fucking sense. Make it make sense. Tomorrow he didn't get in and Maguire didn't. He's barely... <laughs> the, the worst the one, I think, is 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 Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips, 56 minutes. He's played all season. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it... it it's so good. It's so good. But guys, like the motherfucking video, we're true to the quarterfinal. Last me start with the starting 11 because myself and Nick did the preview and now I thought he would rest Rashford and Bruno. But I, I made a big call. I said, I think he start Palestri because Garnacho was injured and one of them would have started. Um, I called Malasio, Malasia and Maguire as well. Didn't get uh, Rashford and Bruno. But what did you make of the start in 11? Were you worried because you saw Maguire buzzing that you saw Palestri? What was your take on the start in 11? Yeah, it was a bit of um, 50-50 on how I was feeling with the, the start in 11. Obviously, you saw in the group chat, as soon as I saw Maguire, I was like, for God's sake. But it was expected, you know. Um, See, so I couldn't be too annoyed because I was expecting it anyway. Palestri... I was really happy. I'm really happy for him. You know, he didn't have the greatest of games, um, or you know, but it's it's, at least his first start, I think, isn't it? So, um, you know, you've got to take that into consideration. There's a lot of pressure, um, you know, getting that first start. But I don't think his work rate is brilliant with Palestri and the runs he can make. So, I'm not going to put him down. So, yeah, I was really happy to see him on the the starting eleven. Um, yeah, with Bruno, I thought he he might have been um, rested. Casemiro, I thought he might have, they might have rested him because of um, the potential ban he could have had. Um, if he picks up another yellow card, um, same with Bruno. But we know that um, for some reason, Ten Hag will keep Casemiro on that pitch, whether he's due a suspension or not. It scares the life out of me. But luckily enough, he didn't get that card today. Um, he has to be, be. We need him last, so he has to be disciplined. Uh, I, we, me and Nick had the debate. And we were saying, you know, because he's on the yellow, would you? And I said no because he's out for four games. If we yeah. started Fred and Sabitzer or Fred and McTominay, and one of them got injured, then we don't have either player for the next yeah. four games. Yeah. So I mean, I I have no issue with Casemiro's discipline. I. Thought he was unlucky with the two reds. I, I oh, thought totally they were a disgrace, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. I actually love that he's, you know, it, it, I mean, my one of my favourite players is Roy Keane, who was studs yeah. up, red card, red card. I, I love that in a player. Yeah. But sometimes if you're on a yellow before you go in, you, you got to have a word with yourself and say, yeah. I'm going to try every, unless it's impossible not to pick up a yellow um, or you're unlucky. You, you just got to take the risk. And as well, I think those yellow cards carry over to the next, the, yeah. the quarterfinal anyway. So, I mean, you know. What do you do? Just not play for the rest of the exactly. season until the final? Yeah, it's, exactly. It is, He's it got is, to. It's to see, you know, it is, it's a decision that you need to make. It's not an easy decision on whether Because you... if we didn't play him and we we'll play him in the next game and he got booked and that one he's going to miss the return like anyway um i think the fact we were four one up maybe if he hadn't been suspended i would have said fucking rest him but i mean he's suspended for four games so i mean he needed a run out um the, the, i loved that palestri started i love that he trusted him i love that he played the, the whole the, the, did yeah. he did he get substituted or did he stay on because i can't remember on. who elanga came on for but to get 90 oh, yeah. minutes for for 
to get nearly 90 minutes to get the majority of the game. And was he world class? No. Did he do anything that I haven't seen <laughs> Anthony do this season? I thought it was about the same level of what I've seen in Anthony. And what I like from, from Palestri is he's he's an old fashioned winger. He'll hug that touchline, he'll take players on and he'll whip crosses in with the outside of his right foot which all our other wingers are inverted in the like to cut in and shoot or cross low and just like hoof it across the box so I love that him that he's different and I love that Ten Hag you know I know we were 4-1 up lads but still I mean they're fifth in La Liga we don't have the best record away from home they dominated a lot of that first half and Ten Hag still trusted him and put in put him in there I don't think Ali or certainly Jose would have would have played a kid away in Betis, no matter how much we were winning the game. So it was nice that Ten Hag trusted him today. I liked it. I liked that Luke Shaw badly needed a rest. I wouldn't be sending him on international duty. That's just me. Um, I'd be I'll, having a knock in training. You know, a couple of them need to... Like you know, Fergie used to do. Yeah, and me and Nick had that debate as well. And we were saying, nowadays, some players prefer going playing for their, nat their international team than they do for Man United. Harry Maguire. <laughs> Luke Shaw, Anthony, because Anthony was injured before the World Cup for like four or five games mm -hmm. and then magically was back in training the week after we finished for the World Cup. No, by the way, he's ill right before an international. Mm -hmm. uh, it just makes you think, guys, it just makes you think. But Laz, the first half, I mean, the, the opening... They were the by far the better team. I mean, they were dominating us. They took the game to us. They were all over us. Maguire, I'm going to say, he was getting us into all sorts of trouble. They they were definitely targeting him. Mm -hmm. Um, they hit the post as well, and they we were very very shaky. They were quick out of the traps. What did you make of the opening 20, 20 minutes before we got a foothold in the game? It was ropey. Um, I wasn't so much worried. But there was a part of me that was like, could this actually be a drill in if we if we if they continued longer and we, we didn't get on that front foot, you know, kind of as soon as we did, I, I was I was then I would have started to get worried. But I think we we let Betty settle in a little bit first, you know, get them in a false sense of security and then we picked it up and we didn't um we didn't let them, you know, score whilst they were ahead and I think that's a testament to us because a lot of the times we can do um once we let people you know run all over us that's it our heads drop but we we knew what we were going to do and I think it works well to be honest I think after after that 25 minutes I think we had the majority of the game really um so I don't I wasn't too worried about it it was just it was a bit hard to watch <laughs> Yeah, and again, Man United is starting slow. Look, I know Betis needed to come out and take the game to us. They were fucking 4 1 down and they were the home side. I think they're probably would have, I think their fans would have gotten top of them if they weren't, at least, I mean, unlike Liverpool last night, who, I mean, fucking hell, uh, they were getting ripped in the second half. They'd done absolutely nothing because you got to at least try, you got to at least go for it. And they were doing that in the, certainly in the first half. Um, They are a good possession-based football inside too. So there was no shame in us uh, getting dominated and, and um, you know, them pressing us and having all the possession and, and taking the game to us because they, they really didn't have they had to uh, but I think United settled down after that we were catching them Laz on the break we were catching them uh, someone said it earlier on and I know uh, you know we do I, I made the, stream, the last stream all about the referee because obviously I mean we got robbed in that game but especially in that first half the ref was abysmal Laz he booked Palestri then he was just constantly blowing the whistle he was oh, giving them God. freeze he was getting caught he was falling for their play acting and their diving because that's what they were doing. And we know they're a La Liga team and that's what they do. But what did you make the ref in that first half, Laws? Yeah, I um, I don't want to kind of make excuses. We won and I, like, I, I didn't want to make excuses um, for the Southampton game. But sometimes you have to. Um, touching on that Southampton game, we deserve something out of that game if the ref actually gave us something and I think we were lucky enough to play better than Betis tonight 
or I think it could have been another one of those where the ref could have, you know, really done it for us. Um, that, how that was a yellow card, I have no clue. He got the ball before the Betis player was even near him. And then seconds later, does the Betis player go into him? I can't remember who it was now. And I just thought, I, I don't, I can't, honestly, Stevie Wonder would have seen that that <laughs> wasn't a yellow card. I can't, I, I can't, I couldn't get my hands, uh, my head around it. He's got, I don't, I don't know what to suggest in terms of the refereeing because all over the place, all over, yeah. you know, in all competitions, not just the Premier League, obviously, as we've seen tonight, these, these major issues in the refereeing. We saw know, City get a, a, a penalty last night. This, this, this and then, and then the Liverpool game the other week where Fabinho um, and Garnacho, yeah. we should have had it, you know, when Garnacho went off, that should have been, you know, the, there's so many problems in the refereeing at the moment. They all should just get sacked and we bring in a new, a new set of them from the Championship. Because, like, in the City game, I mean, Ever Ederson obstructed their player outside the box, should have at least been a free mm. and a potential red, at least a yellow. And he, he booked, I think it was Werner, for, or, or, or the Leipzig player, for, for dissent and gave a free out. I couldn't fucking believe my eyes. Their goal was, I mean, they got a penalty that was never a fucking handball in a million years either. We've had, look, we haven't been on the receiving end tonight. We were lucky because... In that Sociedad game in this competition, that's why we ended up having to play Barca because they gave a penalty against yeah. us for a handball that was never a handball. Um, and it's every week in 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 the Premier League we've seen Nick Pope should have got got sent off for for Newcastle. What are they smoking? It didn't even go to VAR. Should have been a penalty and a free and a, and a, and a red card not given. So it's it's in every competition we've seen it at the World Cup as well. How poor they are. Yeah. I think an overhaul and Howard Webb. Howard Webb has already taken over, um, you know, the, the 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 Premier League Association in the in in England. What are you doing, boy? Because it's getting worse and worse and yeah. worse. And Laz, I mean, Mariner and um, Anthony Taylor should have been yeah. demoted. And yeah. Anthony Taylor was refing that Napoli game last night. So it's like he gets like rewarded yeah. for sh absolute abomination of refereeing performances. It's it's just becoming a bit of a joke, and I think it's not even you know we're not even sitting there complaining just because it's against us. It's it's in multiple games. You know we're not. It's not just us that are being hard done by. But at the moment, we we are seeing a lot of it. We're seeing a lot of the the back end of this unfair refereeing and it is it's quite annoying we need to probably start um, paying the refs again um or you know like barcelona maybe city <laughs> because pep probably took his his coins from from barca just it, it, it's amazing how Pe pep is lauded over and he's the biggest cheat in football and as well as a player because he got banned twice for testing fucking positive for drugs don't think i don't forget that boy because i I'm, I'm old enough to remember when you played for barca you absolute cheat the biggest cheat in the football uh, blood transfusions and you can go and check all that court case blood transfusions with Pep Guardiola and, and Barcelona how quick they get their players back from injury and you see it with Man City as well uh, paying the refs cheating the books financial for playing all that biggest cheat in football um, and, it, and it showed it last night but you know it, I know it didn't cost us tonight but you've got to highlight bad referee at Reese and bad refereeing performances because mm -hmm. it has to be highlighted. It has to be. Um, you've got to got to cover. Shout out to Chloe. Every time I see Chloe, uh, she's got a new Avi. It's a witch hunt because United took away the refs' the bonus payment by knocking out Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Chloe speaking facts um, for the super chat of Queen. But as well as I'm going to say a witch hunt since that Man City game where Bruno scored when there was the. Yeah potential offside with Rashford and we've got nothing since that game nothing blatant actual stuff against us that's clear and not given do you think it's am I am I, I am I like reading too much into it is it is it that obvious I think I, I have actually made this comment before I think it's it's kind of I don't I, I'll be wrestling it I think it's that right they've had their controversial decision now we can't give anything to them 
as it might be seen as controversial. So I think because we have that controversial decision, it's all going the other way to avoid another contra controversial decision for us again if that makes sense i think that's the kind of way the the refs are looking at it um which makes no sense to me but because you can't right or wrong after i mean you no. can't then give us nothing and nothing and nothing because you, you made a bad decision in that game yeah. it's not our fucking fault it's your fault for for being incompetent um you know he was shocking that ref in the first half yeah. diabolical and it was fucking obvious um but someone who i'm actually going to give a shout out tonight because i thought he was potentially our man of the match and in that first half he was brilliant david de Gea, because he made two world class saves he was coming out catching balls punching yeah. balls strong punches his distribution was brilliant quick uh release of the balls quick kick kick outs um command in his box sweeper keeper he looked confident assured he was magnificent tonight laws two very important saves as well what did you make of david De Gea tonight yeah i think recently i've been getting frustrated with him he's an incredible shot stopper but the ball at his feet is it really is it, it is a massive problem um it wasn't as bad today there was a couple of times where he did play the ball a bit short and it got us in trouble but not too much to you know obviously anything to come of it i think he's just an old school keeper though at the end of the day he's a shot stopper um and i think he did have a great a great performance today um as you say he did look a lot more confident some wherever they are harry Maguire fans might say it's because he's in front of him <laughs> <laughs> harry Maguire is fans <laughs> He's got to be one somewhere. <laughs> His family, that's the bonus. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I do think he looked a lot more confident. He saves, he, he did make some world-class saves. Um, I think he made a brilliant one in the second half as well. Um, so, yeah, he did He did a good job for us today. Um, and I'm happy that obviously we still got him. Um, and I just, I know a lot of people want a new keeper in summer. I don't think I'm ready for it yet. Not for me. I, I mean, you can you can play around poor distribution tactically, um, and and he has shown in a lot of games that he's worked on it and he's and he's doing well in it. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, to me, a keeper's job is to keep the ball out of the back of the net, and there's nobody better. You can say David Rea, all these duds. There's a reason why he's 27 and playing with Brentford. 27 and the man is playing with Brentford. It's no coincidence. I've seen Fabian Bartes, a World Cup winner, World Cup come to Old Trafford and completely crumble under the pressure. Don't think, boy, I don't forget those performances against Arsenal because they're enough to haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, he was abysmal. And then you had, you know, that gap of all of those shit goalkeepers between Schmeichel and Van der Sar. And we've been down that road. It's not nobody it's not easy to come in and because it's so such a specialized and nerve-wracking position you have to have elite mentality to come yeah. in and take that man united number one it's not that we saw with dean henderson it's fine being number one at sheffield united and doing bits and then coming in with man united you know not the same animal Different. whatsoever that was fish in it absolutely absolutely but uh, like to me I, uh, one of my notes i know uh, 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 trev said uh he had a good game one of my notes that first half was harry Maguire needs to retire <laughs> that was what i wrote down oh my god because i mean they got him behind again um and it looked like Maguire lost his man rather than martin is mm -hmm. but last we nearly scored right before half time oh yeah I, I don't know, was it V-Course or was it Palestri miss it the shot and then someone, it scrambled and it hit the post uh, right before half time. And Trev wanted us to talk about V-Course, that he feels like we're playing with 10 men. Look, he's not getting the goals and you can hit a barn, barn door with a banjo. Um, did did score recently. Mm -hmm. What are you making of him, Laz? Um, I really like him. Um... Uh, he's not a striker. He's one hundred percent not a striker. Um, I think with that, the goal just be well, the potential goal just before half time. I think he was very unlucky. He stretched yeah, himself that was so unlucky. far. You know, he, he he stretched his whole body. He just he just wasn't there, and that, that was just unfortunate. You know, but he was in the right place. You know, and 
it wasn't his goal to take, if if you know what I mean. It was Palestri, and he but he was there to try when it got deflected. Um, I do. I think he's he's just a workhorse. I think this was one of his quieter games in terms of absolutely anything on the mm. pitch. Because you know you can even when he doesn't score, he's still putting in that work. Um, you know he's running around, he's getting them balls. But at this, I think this game it, it was very quiet, and it probably was playing with ten men. Do I think he's a long term player for us? No, but I think he can he can put opposition players off and let our you know our wingers and Rash and or Rashford or whatever to come in and score those goals. He's kind of like a, a target man. Um, but like a, a, a kind of scapegoat, a little faint of a player. Um, but is is. Oh. Could you try again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think Siri knows what the curse is either. <laughs> <laughs> that there you go. Just clip that. What do you think of it, guys? <laughs> Just clip Siri. <laughs> Oh, you couldn't make it up. You absolutely couldn't make it up. Oh, my God. Didn't quite catch that, Laz. <laughs> but my answer to that, then, is, like, I don't actually know what he fully does because he's not a striker. But I don't think he's as bad as a lot of people make out. I just think he's not doing what's expected of him. He's doing other things. Look, oh guys, I never wanted this player. There was people trying to convince me in the live chat that that he was, you know, we need him, he's going to score goals, la, 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 la. What I will say is, all I want in a Man United player is to work hard. Well, obviously, I want the quality, you know. you Clearly, you have to have the quality, but I want him to work hard. He's available. He's busting his bollocks off every single game. Mm -hmm. This is coming from someone who didn't want him. He works hard in the team. Okay, is he prolific? No, but I knew he was never going to be prolific. Yep. Two and 20 in the Premier League, he was never. He's a body. We didn't have anybody else. Mm -hmm. He he He's honest. He's hardworking. He loves playing for Man United. I mean, other than scoring, I don't think I could have asked for anything else from him. Yep. I've, and I've seen players up front for Man United Way better players, Ronaldo, Cavani, Martial, when he was fit and firing. I have quiet games and not be involved in the game at all. Um, so I think you can allow a player to have a quiet game and not be involved. I don't think it's much to go in on him. We bought him to play up front. He's not really scoring, but I think what he's brought um, is a lot, lot more. And he's here until the end of the season. I'm going to back him in a man. I'm going to back him until the very end. I hope he scores the winner in the Europa League final. You know, I hope he scores oh, the winner on cry, Sunday. Yes, <laughs> because when I saw him after he won his first trophy, at, 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 you know, at Wembley, I, I, it just... He was the one I was buzzing for more, you know, yes, Ten Hag, yes, Bruno, a couple other players, but it, it, it was just, and I'm usually not happy when it comes to no, that. I couldn't not. help I it. I, I, I couldn't it. help it. I couldn't help it. And the following stream, I remember going, the person that I just was buzzing for because his reaction was like our reaction. That's what it was like. There was no, you know, bullshit. He sat down, he savoured, he took it all in, he was taking pictures with the fans. He fucking loved it. That's why when people were going in and him over touching the Anthony and I was like, for fuck, what are we doing here? For fuck's sake, get a grip. Get yeah. a grip. He was um, um, after that FA Cup final as well. It, it's a, it's a, a clip that'll stick with me for a very long time. When he's crouched down and, you know, and he's taking it all in and he's got tears in his eyes, there's one bit where you see Casemiro in the background look over to him and you see on Casemiro's face and you can see him just think, I'm going to let him have his moment, smiles and walks away. And it's just like, oh, God. He just, you could see in Casemiro how much it meant to Vegas as well. And it was, oh, it was just such a special moment. Yeah, he's so unproblematic. He's, yeah. fit, he's fit, he's available, he's working his bollocks off. I can't, I, I obviously I would love him to score, you know, 10 goals in the next 10 games. It was never going to happen. He was never going to be that player. Um, but I, I, I've 
I always want the players to to do well. Even Maguire, I have a Harry Maguire agenda, but I want I would love him to play well in a Man United team because it benefits Man United. And in in that final two, he got in the system, played really really well, played brilliant away at Barcelona when we needed him tactically in that game as well. Look, Bruno's had poor games. Rashford wasn't great tonight. No. Loads of players have in and out games. Is he Man United quality? No, but while he's in there. I, I, I'll take that from him all day long. He doesn't make that many mistakes either, Vagos, really. I think the just, difference just is... Just when... finishing, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, but as in mistakes that cost us, you know, whereas Maguire, this is, this is my difference, and it probably sounds like we're contradicting ourselves, but the difference is Maguire, when he plays, it's foolish and um, it's unreliable and it can cost us, whereas Vagos... You know, he just he just has this work rate. He might not be scoring the goals that we need him to score, but his work rate's there and he's doing other things off the ball. So, you know, that's that just to clarify, that's the kind of difference that Maguire's a liability. Vegos, just because he's not doing exactly what we brought him in for, he's still doing something. And I think a lot of people don't realise that. Look, uh, he's never he he guys he yeah I know someone said sorry SL he was scoring load of goals in the Bundesliga but we've had players Kagawa Mkhitaryan Sancho the Bundesliga the levels in the Bundesliga besides obviously you know Haaland who's who's going to do it anywhere and everywhere and it's a different machine the levels in the Bundesliga it's nowhere near the Premier League so him being prolific there. Were beshicked us the quad the, the level of the player we were getting in V course was at Burnley. That's where we saw, it and that's why people, you know, when they were saying to me, but when he was at um Wolfsburg and when he was at Besiktas, they're not the levels of the Premier League. But look, I, I'm not going to go like unless he has a fucking absolute stinker, I'm not really going in on him. I'm not having it. I'm not I'm not having it. Um I'm <laughs> and this is from someone who was adamantly against him because I'm just if he works his bollocks off in the team and he's trying hard, the players like him, he's not problematic. Yes. I take it until the end of the season. It's working. We're one, we we're winning. We're winning. We're winning. We're winning. We won our first trophy with him as well. The second half laws, we started way better in the second half. I think it, <laughs> I know Ten Hag is bald. He doesn't have a hair dryer, but there's it must be a, like a blowtorch or something a half time. He's <laughs> like, you know, um taking it out because they came out, the gears were shifted, the tempo was a lot better. Nice passing and movement. What did you make of the start before? Because we were creating chances, we were getting in behind, we were definitely fired up from the half time. I think because the start of the first half, we were we started off slow. I think we knew that we hadn't capitalized in the first half when we did, you know, get on top. We knew that we needed to come out again, be on top from the, the start, and you know, at least get a goal just to put it to bed even though we didn't really look like um <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> um even though you know we weren't we weren't gonna lose um uh you know a three three goal lead um we still knew, knew we needed to get something out of this game so i think ten arg would have gone in and said look right we're on top of these now we need to just score a goal put it to bed and then you can pass it around um, and that's what they did. Um, so yeah, you couldn't have asked for more really from him. And I think I think it was the right thing to do um, in terms of to get the goal and then just do as you please with it, basically. BS says the treble is on. I think people are underestimating that Fulham game because they're going to be no mugs. You need to play in a lot, a lot of games. And the, the fast. Fulham are playing incredible at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a cup game, and you know we're without Casemiro. I'm telling you guys, it's it's going to be, it's not going to be a walk in the park that game. Um, it depends who we get in the Europa League draw as well. We, we you know, we could get when it. Is that? When's the draw? Um, I'm assuming tomorrow. I I I assume I, I I'm assuming that the both draws will be tomorrow, um, for the Champions League and the Europa League. Um, last the goal because because before the goal. He had two great chances, and I literally said before he scored, you have got to be doing better there. Oh, my God, Marcus, and then obviously then he scored. But 
the two chances before that looked like it wasn't going to be his night because he blasted yeah. him and he was clean through twice. And I mean, he's got 34 goal and assists in 42 games, Marcus. What did you make of his chances before he scored? They weren't, I mean, they, they were poor finishes, really. It was, it felt a bit like Marcus of old um, a couple of times tonight. Find himself offside. Um, I think when he was coming one on one with the keeper again, where he had to think about things, he was struggling with that finishing. Um, there was a there was a point as well where he should have really put his head to it, but he didn't. It it kind of just came over him. He like chest. Him. Was it like it? Oh, I, I, with that one, I don't think he had much. I don't think he could have done much. It was too low for a head. I think he could have brought it down, don't get me wrong, but I don't know whether there was, you know, enough time. But there was another one where it came, I think it came over him from behind. And I thought he could have controlled it or something, but it just kind of looked like he left it and it went out. Um, but yeah, I felt, I did say that he's not having a great game because um, I didn't I didn't think he was. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still going to stand by that. It wasn't his greatest game, but, you know, he's been playing very well. So, you know, the, these things do happen, as we just said. But, that goal, oh, God. Take it away, Laz, because, oh, my God. Honestly, it hurt my throat because I was when it went in, I was just like, ah, I can't believe that just happened. Because like, it, it, it was the fact that it was the outside of his boot. He knew exactly what he was doing. He had so much composure, and that was perfect. So he had so much room around him. It was that kind of again Rashford of old still. Like he didn't he didn't need you know, he didn't have much to think about. And that's when Rashford's at his best. I mean, he's been doing great all round, to be honest, with his, you know, his goals this season. But Rashford's at his best when he doesn't have to think about what he's doing. Um and he had so much time. He you know, he played the ball perfectly for himself. Outside foot. Oh in the, the curve. Back of the net. It, the way it, I don't even it, know how he did it. Like defying the laws of physics. Like it was just so. It was just such a nice goal, and I think he it gave him the confidence after missing two very easy goals. I think he kind of he put you know he put his foot through that. Like he meant it because he was like, I need to score now because I just missed two great opportunities. That's such a good point, Laz, because it was right after he missed and then it was like, bang. It reminded me, it reminds me sometimes when he used to take our free kicks and he did the Ronaldo thing where he'd hit the valve and the ball would just mm -hmm. go shoo. So I wonder, has been working on it in training because this swerve on that ball, oh my God, beautiful. it was a goal worthy of winning any game. It was beautiful. And I agree with Trev, it showed his confidence with that one shot. Yeah. I think last season's Rashford probably would have like went and hit a player <laughs> or went into like Rose Um it's just showing that everyone that he's really, really confident and everything is um paying off for him. Laws some of the teams. Sevilla, we we've struggled against Sevilla previously. Mm -hmm. Uh Juve, Feyenoord. I'm going to say I would love Feyenoord because obviously it's Rude's team and I would love to play them and they're doing really, really well in, in the Dutch league. Um, obviously, one is Sporting and Arsenal as well. Laz, who would you love from the draw from the team so far? I'm going to say don't fear any team, not even Arsenal. I don't fear any of them. I don't know. I'm more trying to think about what city I'd want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, what I might care be good about lies. more than, than actually who we're going to play. I'm like, which oh, sorry, yeah, most? he's he's a, a Van Persie's team. Sorry, my apologies, folks. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think I'd like Feyenoord as well. I don't know. Fancy a trip to Turin? No. Pogba, Di Maria. Well, yeah, no. Well, Pogba probably wouldn't be fit. <laughs> they want to get rid of Pogba again, don't they? Now they're trying um, to terminate his contract, trying to get ways that get him out of his contract, aren't they? Thank God he we, he didn't he's sign been found out. He's been found out, and it's just so irritating that it took him to go back to Juve for them to for every, the world to realise. What yeah, because apparently it was everyone else's fault at Man United. It was the different managers, or yeah. he was played in different position. He was playing, look who he's in playing alongside. He needed this player to 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 
free him, etc., etc., etc. Um fucking nonsense. Um, an absolute nonsense. And then he was injured for like a year and then had disciplinary issues and couldn't come back in and then got injured again. It's just laughable. Yeah, I agree. Thank God he's not our problem. Thank God, thank God, thank God. But Laz, the early substitutes, we saw Sibitzer and Sancho come on for Fred and Rashford. It was nice as well for Fred, I'm going to say, because we need him in the upcoming games for him to get a rest and he's played a lot lately. What did you make of the cameos from Sibitzer? I was really impressed with Sibitzer. Sancho done decent as well. I'm going to say I was a little surprised Sancho didn't start tonight. What did you make the two cameos from the two players? I hate to say this, and I don't mean this in a, a, a mean way. I actually kind of forgot about, keep forgetting about Sancho still. Um, you know, when I'm thinking about who's going to start and things like that, I just I forget he's an option. Um, I don't mean that disrespectfully or anything like that, because, you know, there is, there's been some games where he's played well. Um, but I personally, I, when he come on, I don't think he really had a great game, in my opinion. I wasn't impressed with him really that much at all. He didn't really do much. Um, so, bit, so I think he's such a good addition to, to the team. Obviously, he's been he's been out for a couple of games. But whenever he does come on, he does exactly what is asked of him. And that's all I can ever ask, especially from a player who has been signed to cover someone else. Um, so he's impressing me constantly, Sabitza. Um in all honesty, and he impressed me again tonight. He's, you know, he's not kind of, he's a bit, he's a, he's a, he's a bit like Ericsson, you know, he's kind of understated. He doesn't do anything crazy or, you know, that you think, oh my God, but he just does what he needs to do. And But he scored as well, Lars. Exactly. He's just, he's got them in him, I think. He's got a few goals in him and, and we probably will see a few by, before the end of the season. And I do actually hope we do. Sign him in summer. Do you want to sign rotation him? in the in the midfield. I know that um, Bayern have said that categorically he's not for sale. Blah blah blah. But that's just a bargain. Every so player is for sale. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. But uh, actually, just on that topic about everyone's for sale, Harry Kane is not for sale because Levy's not going to sell him apparently again. I think Harry Kane is for sale if we pay the right price. My thing is. He's not going to go because he's a bottler with small mentality that will stay at Spurs and just, you know, like share or do that. To keep I, I, him until the end of his contract. Yeah. I think Bad Harry business. Kane will sign a new contract. That's what I think he'll do. Play out the rest of his career and be the Premier League top scorer. I, I, I mean, it's a carbon copy of Alan Shearer. Had the chance to come to a big mm -hmm. club. Didn't. Um, He can say he, may, you know, never regretted his decision. But we know, we, we know Otherwise, um, one one trophy in your entire career. You can keep your individual awards because they mean fuck all at the yeah. end of the day. Um, and it's the same with Harry Kane. He he doesn't have the elite mentality. So he's not going to leave. He he'll stay there with a bumper deal and etc. And, and he'll stay there. Um, Sibitzer, not for me. I wouldn't keep him at the end of the okay. season. I need to see more. I need to see more from him because we haven't seen enough. As well, I think. I do think we need a backup to Casemiro, but that's not his natural position. No. Um, so I think we've got bigger fish to fry. I think uh, we've heard today, maybe potentially in for Jude Bellingham. We need to be going all guns blazing, balls on the table for, for Jude Bellingham. And we need a backup to Casemiro. So I do like Sabitzer. He's tidy on the ball. Like you said, Laz, he never puts a foot wrong. I know one or two games he was dodging, but he, I mean, he's new to the league and, you know, he wasn't up to the pace. I, he's a solid player. I think he would be a solid squad player. But I think we need to let McTominay go and get a replacement, mm -hmm. a direct replacement for Casemiro, who's now 31 and obviously will have missed a lot of games through suspension. And we need to be going balls to the wall for Drew Bellingham. So those would be the two options. Just because of that, um, I wouldn't be going for Sabitzer. I do think he's a good player. I was really happy when we signed him. Just not for me. Um, after that, Laz, I mean, United controlled the game. We, we definitely did. Seven away European games without a defeat now for Man United since that young boys game. Um, Dalo and Lindelof came on. Uh, Aaron wan and Martinez went off. What did you think of Aaron wan Lots of shouts for him in the late chat. He has looked up and down um, lately. The same with Dalo. Both of them have looked up and down. Brilliant in some games. Shaky as fuck in other games. What have you made of him? 
I, do you think we should keep I remember Saka in the summer? 100%. I think you can see that the, he's still young and you can see that he's 100% willing to, to learn and he's listening. Um, You know, him going forward at the moment is head and shoulders you know, above what he was doing last season or, you know, in before the World Cup, he could barely get a game at United. He's come back and he's, he's he is like a new player. Yeah, there's still some inconsistencies. But gen generally speaking, I think he's improved, his game's improved so much and he still is one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders. I, I, I can't genuinely, currently right now, the way he's playing, I couldn't see a reason why we should get rid of him. I think because both players have been too inconsistent for my liking and they have been for, I, I mean, they, Dalo ha, has had a period of time where he was the best right back in Europe, like he was, regressed since the, his injury after the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Aaron wan very good when he came in. I think that some of the performance recently have shown the complacency has crept back in and kind of reminded me why... Um, to be honest, I think you can flip a coin between Dalo and Aaron wan -Bissaka. One of them can go, and then I think we need a better right back than both of them, and and one of them can be the the backup. If it's Aaron Van Bissaka, fine, um, because I don't, I I think Dalo obviously on form on his day is probably the better player, but he's too inconsistent for me. And he, people forget Dalo is injury prone. Mm -hmm. It was only like last season in the spell under Ralph Rangnick and then continued through this early up until the World Cup that he had a prolonged period injury free. Has picked up a couple of injuries since that World Cup. Is, is Again, um, yep. I've never been his biggest fan. I will praise them when, when they're really, really good. Like I, I always do like Aaron Mambasaka who has surprised me with his resurgence for me. One of them can go and, and then get a better, better. I, I want Laz because we've been linked with Ajimin and Bellingham and, you know, the big Frankie de Jong and the 100 million players. Where are the gems? I want the, 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 the gem right back that costs like 10 million that nobody's mm -hmm. heard of. Yeah. That, that, you know, I mean, Leicester got Kante for how much they got Mares for how much. I, I, why can't Man United go and get those players? I want that gem back up centre back when Maguire goes and, and, and the cheap right back that we could get who's then world class. Can I think get them as a week? Like, I think our surely... scouting the, the scouting is a big problem um in the club at the moment still. Um I want I want our scouting our scouts to be travelling the world go into these lower leagues in foreign countries and, and watching, but I just don't think we do that anymore, really, like we used to. Um, and I think that's where we fall down because there is, you know, there's talent out there and we could find a gem, but I just don't think we're putting in the work because it's easier just to spend a bit more money and just get the, the, the best thing. And also it was always a shirt sale thing, wasn't it, as well, in business. So until the glazers go as well, a, a lot of it is to do with business and what shirts will sell um a, a a kid from you know wherever who costs 10 million isn't going to do anything so until the glazers have gone um we're not really gonna invest in um that's that kind of scouting system there's breaking news about the sale of man united there's breaking news um it guys well it's not it's not like we're sold or do, do, okay but in the last 10 minutes simon stone has come out obviously we know one of the most credible journalists out there from the bbc meetings between man united and qatari reps we saw them today guys going in there like the avengers all all, all of the reps from bank of america and, and the qataris and um a couple of the other <laughs> so they we knew that they were having meetings today with rain group and and people on in our finance department so simon stone says the meetings between man united and the qatari reps today are described as positive the qatari delegation were at man united for 10 hours today 10 hours they remain committed to buying the club and then mike keegan who's been the one more than romano ornstein from the daily mail He's been the one with his finger on the pulse, has said. The meetings were very positive today. Talks, substantive. Sheikh Yazim will now launch a second bid for Man United. So he's definitely through to the next round. It's like the fucking X Factor. Laz, 
we'll have Sir Jim tomorrow and his reps will go through uh, and, and they'll meet with the, the team tomorrow. Um, Matt Lawton from the Times as well has come out and he's from the Financial Times and he said the Qataris remain uh, determined to buy United. The, there was positive talks today and a second offer will be presented in the next 10 days. Are you still there, Laws? Oh, you're still there. Yeah. Uh, Laws, Sorry. Qatar or Sir Jim? It's one of the toughest decisions because I can't see Sir Jim getting the club to where we want to be, in all honesty. Um, but do I want the Qataris and a load of sports washing? Not really either, but we're not in a position to be to be picky really are we you know there's not that many options and I never ever thought you know a couple of years ago I'd say it but I'd probably rather the Qataris and it does pain me to say it but we need we need good investment we need people that are going to put the money in we need someone that can afford to get rid of the debt who is happy to get rid of the debt to let us start afresh and hopefully bring us back to what the club used to be. Um, my only worry is kind of the the upgrades on the the ground as well with the Qataris. They want to move us. Don't really sit right with me, but like there, I say, that's not a hundred percent loss. That, that no, I know, but yeah, it's, it's an option, isn't it? And, yeah, and that is a big is. thing for me. That that, but as I say, we can't really be picky. You know, we we've we've had however many years of the Glazers now, and it's been hell on earth. So. Anything is better than the Glazers, in all honesty. But I just don't think Sir Jim's up for it. From what I hear from like Nice fans and things, they um, hate him. Exactly. Obviously, he's got bigger connections to United, so he might, you know, in, you know, invest in terms of his time and you know what he wants to do with the club more than he does <laughs> for a bag of garlic. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't, I don't think Sir Jim and his company are big enough to deal with all the issues and the problems that the club has to make it better. And just on that, that someone said that the stadium, the the ground's falling apart. Yeah, it is. We've got leaks everywhere. The it might not. It's so the, outdated. The, Dan said previously when we were having the discussion that unfortunately the ground might be too far gone to salvage it. I don't think so at all. If structurally, I, think, I don't. I don't. I. I think. Yeah. I think it's more just we need to upgrade them concourses if we need to just go up slightly and you know make it higher capacity. But I don't think. I don't think personally it is too far gone. Um, we just <laughs> need to upgrade a lot of things. Um, and I think that's the main priority is the upgrade just in the concourse and. I think when you walk out, you know, and you're walking down your seat, it, when you walk out, it, it's just, you feel, you feel it when you, and, and it's magical from that point. When you walk, when you pass those turnstiles and you get past like the back of these steps because they need to go up to your seat, laws, and then you walk out and the pitch is right there. It's, the feeling is unbelievable because you know, I know when I, when I, I go and I, I say, George Best has played here. Samara stood over there. And I know, and I've, I've had a season ticket holder in here for, he was this, been like 50 odd years and said, but that's the past we need to move to. And, and, and I said, for me, um, you can do a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff without moving the stadium. You can even knock it down on the, and build it on the same grounds. You can, you know, you, there, there's loads of things you can do. And I want to go to the game and, and see, I want to be in where Sir Matt, you know, I want to look and see Ten Hag and know Sir Matt stood there, Sir Alex stood there, George Best played there, Duncan Edwards played there. And then they know, like, it shouldn't be a history and thing, but we're a historic that. club. We're always going to have that history and we, we need to preserve it as much as we can because um, we've lost that in the past few years. So any uh, anything we can preserve is better. You know, the most... The, mo the more we can preserve, the better. So I am a very nostalgic fan. Um, I go to the games week in, week out. So it's not as magical for me anymore. 
um i just walk out to be seen 10 minutes late you know <laughs> um but it's still one of the best places to be on earth um and i think if we lost that then it'd be very very sad because i do feel for you know the older city fans who you know used to go to main road they so i'm fucking many of them trust me and i <laughs> fucking remember main road used to be empty about five thousand of them in there scattered around but it's just like I, I, just the thought the thought of that ever happening to united i hate it i don't like it um yeah so that i i could handle it we were watching the game last night my mom said why is that closed off and i said because they're rebuilding the stadium and they're doing it bit by bit by yeah. bit by bit obviously you know the fans would suffer from that because there's less seats of course but i mean we would suffer if we ended up grown sharing at man city because their capacity is way less than ours anyway uh do we want to pay them per game and go it would be the only time the etihad would be full that well, and when still, it's, still, it's still the council so we would be pay it'd be the council yeah it, it's an option to grown share with man city for a season um that and and you could do it all in one or you could do it bit by bit by bit because i remember under martin edwards when we were upgrading the upgrading the stretford end and we were upgrading other parts of the stadium it, it was empty and they were upgrading it and the rest of the stadium was full back in the fucking early 90s so it can be done obviously i laws i agree with you with it's it's the concourses it's right before you walk out the, it's a shithole, like, let's be honest in there, concrete walls thing, and you go into other places and it's like state of the art. But it's like Barca's ground, ugh, it's disgusting. Like, it's, it's, oh, the light, it's like a multi-storey car park. It's absolutely awful. And it did slightly remind us, remind me of Old Trafford, just rickety, you know, feel there's no, there's no real love in there. It's all just a hollow shell. And you just go up, you go through the motions, and it's just a bit dingy. Some people might, uh, 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 you know, Apple fans might think that when they come to all <laughs> draft. That's what no, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. comparing it to the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lars, man of the match. No, De Gea has it in our poll by two percent. David De Gea, thirty-two percent. Martin is thirty percent. Palestri 20%, Denaro and Basaka 18%. Who gets your man of the match? Really hate when your keeper or a defender gets man of the match. Really hate it, especially when you've won. You don't have, you can give it to, I mean, Palestri played 90 minutes. He done, not, he done decent. I'm going to give it to Haya. Yeah, I I was so impressed with him in the first half and then in the second half with that punch and he made another save. Um, brilliant for me, David Gea. I know it was like we were 4 1 up, but yeah, it's it's gotta be. <laughs> he did come on, Laz. He did. He did come he, on. And he, well, he made a great block when he came he did, on as well. He did <laughs> almost immediately. Almost immediately. Um and don't, do, and don't that didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't get away with that one. Right, guys, we are going to wrap up. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the fucking channel, Laz. Where can they go and follow you? Lauren Page underscore zero seven. No, Lauren. Oh, I forget every time. Every time. I've tagged you. Wait, no. Wait. <laughs> don't know. I still don't know it. Um. Oh. It's Lauren underscore page 07. I think you did say that. Yeah, did you? Lauren underscore page 07, guys. Go follow Laz. Follow us at She Devils United. Now, we'd have our preview tomorrow night, but I've got something on before, so I might have to push it to nine. I'll check with Dan first. But if, if not, guys, I'll do the preview on Saturday. Um, We'll be live over the next few days. And, of course, Sunday, straight after that Fulham game. Shout out to everyone for getting involved in the live chat. And, of course, Laz for coming on. Guys, have a smashing long... It's long weekend here in Ireland because it's Paddy's day tomorrow um and we're off so guys have a smashing friday take care all